Welcome to DJN TV and Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. Now introducing the one and only Ben Stowe. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Good evening. It is night Tuesday here now. <laughs> words is hard. Wait, it's been so long. I forgot how to put words into a sentence, Ben. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm... <sighs> I know how you feel. I was just on the road and I'm like, what the, these other people that are Ro in person? I feel like I need to have a screen in Ro front of them. Ro like, road? What's the, Ro Ro what's that? Road. Ro Ro what's, what's that? Ro Is that that thing past my mailbox where people go and never come back? Yeah, it's like a magical land where you <laughs> eat food out of a sack and anyway. What, I mean, why, would you put, why would you put your peanut butter sandwiches that you make in a sack? No, I didn't. Somebody else made him and put him in there. Tell me more about this weird, weird world you live in. You talk, you talk. It's kind of like what we're doing right now. You talk in a weird box thing, except you can't see the person you're talking to. And then you drive up to a window and somebody hands you a sack full of food. Get out of here. That I know. Like I was like, what is this witchcraft? Somebody's like, within 20 feet of you? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's got to be something fake or something there. I'm just saying. Yeah, I think as I was getting my food, like the person handing it out the window, I actually touched my hand and I, I was like, oh, my human contact. I didn't even know what to do. Like, like human contact. I, it was you, like surreal. You hand sanitized, I'm hoping. <laughs> After I made two more trips through just to try it again, I'm like, could you, could you touch me again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I just, this is so crazy, please. They got like a Groucho Marx mask. You're like, hey, didn't you just order? No, 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 no. no. No, here's my I was somebody else in an identical car with the same credit card. <laughs> it really has a thing for double cheeseburgers. But anyway, that's... hey, good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight we're going to eat the fingers, you know, like <laughs> I'll be right I mean, here. Like, this, is, oh, this is great. Tonight, gang, we're going to go through, uh, we're getting ready for weddings. Weddings are coming back. For a lot of you, they didn't go anywhere. They just kind of get a little smaller. Well, they're coming back. They're coming up back bigger. Uh, some of us are going to be getting back for the first time in almost a year to, for our wedding events. And it might be something that you're wanting to kind of change things up a little bit. So I asked Ben to put together some different uh, options for getting uh, some wash lighting or some lighting on our dance floor. So Ben, did you get a chance to put together a list? Dance yeah, yeah, just, just, let me let me give you some more time. So while Ben, I didn't is, think that was the show we were doing today. I uh, have uh, well, just forget all that no, stuff. Those, those that was that. Oh, that was this other show that we were going to do. Oh man, that one was that had a lot of prep too. Sorry about that. Throw that prep away. We don't need any of it. So lighting, we're going to talk about that. But before we get started, next Monday night, uh, for those of you who got to see the beginning of the video, there's going to be a night of virtual training. Oh, by, Ben, by the way, next Monday night, um, you need to be in one of the exhibit rooms because NLFX Pro is going to have one of the virtual exhibit rooms next Monday night. Uh, surprise. Yeah, surprise. So, uh, <clears throat> but next Monday uh, night. Actually, so yeah, maybe. What time? Next Monday. Uh, I'm pretty much any time you want to because that's the magic of it. Hopefully there'll be... And an early evening time that we can come in there. Like uh, ideally from six until eight is when the exhibit spaces are going to be only there. They will be the only thing open. And then at eight o'clock, uh, and this is all Eastern time, eight o'clock to 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing educational content. So right from six until eight Eastern, we're going to have it like every half hour that we're going to feature one of the virtual uh, exhibit spaces. So you're going to have uh, Danny Max is going to be one of them with Max Design. Danny's going to be talking a little bit about uh, his newest creations for the DJ industry with his his uh, Max Photo Booth or Photo Max DJ Booth. Got to get that so, easy for you to say. Yeah, yeah, it's much more difficult. I didn't think it would be that bad. Um, our friends from DJ Event Planner are going to be there, and they're going to be going through and giving kind of a tutorial on a few things for that. So uh, we're going to have a great time for that first two-hour block. So you can actually, everybody can go into one of the exhibit spaces and kind of hear what's new, what's fun, what's what's uh, really hot. And then at 8 o'clock, we start out. We've got, uh, uh, let's see, we've got Jim Cerrone. We've got Rachel Lynch. We've got uh, Stacey Hawk Carroll. We've got Jason Janai. Mike Walter and I am Jonathan Simmons, Jonathan DJ Wupig. They are all doing seminars. We've got five mini seminars. You're pretty much uh, like like straight batting a thousand favorite yeah. people of mine, right some, there. Yeah, so. some great folks. And and then our headliner for the night is Mike Walter, who will be doing a main uh, presentation for the night. So it should be a fun night. Uh, next Monday night we'll have more information of that coming March fifteenth, and we'll see you guys there. 
Okay. You know, to this day, having uh, there's a story, and I probably don't have time to tell tonight, but you know, Mike Walter was in a presentation I did years ago, and I mean like 20 years ago. Uh, I was fairly new as a presenter. Uh, anyway, it was, I have a great story from that night. One of these days I'll have to tell you. So, uh, you anyway. know, seriously, we're not going any farther until the story is told. <laughs> well, all right. So, uh, it was, uh, I was doing sort of a tour of, uh, some groups on the, uh, Northeastern seaboard. And again, this was probably at least 20 years ago. And I was, I was a lot, uh, greener as a presenter, you know, and I was less, Less, less self-assured, you know, I think, you know, less, just less uh, reps under my belt, so to speak. Now, I just, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I know, I know what I know and I don't care and, you know, whatever. And But anyway, I think I was a bit more self-conscious back then, if I'm being completely honest, you know, mm -hmm. I was a little more insecure. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I've come to understand is that some of the things I talk about are pretty nerdy. I know, big shock, right? So I try to insert some humor in things and, and keep the, uh, keep it sort of lighthearted and keep people engaged and, you know, keep them awake. Uh, you know, well, anyway, uh, I think Mike was the, I think it was the second night, uh, that Michael Walter was there and, uh, I recognized him right away and I thought, Oh my gosh, this guy's kind of a big deal. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've heard of him and I, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, and he's sitting in my seminar. I'm like, that's also pretty cool. Anyway, we got underway and I, I told a joke and you know, like no, I mean, nobody laughed. I mean, nobody laughed. Mike kind of smirked but nobody laughed. And as we go on I'm presenting some more stuff and I crack another joke and, and nobody laughed, but Mike laughed this time. He kind of, you know, chortled sure. <laughs> and, and this goes on and, you know, and, and everybody is just staring at me like I'm speaking a different language. Every time I tell a joke, they just look at me like, and, and yet Mike is laughing louder and louder every time. And by the end, he's literally like pounding his fist on the table, laughing so hard at my jokes. And I go through this range. I don't think, I don't know if I've ever told this story. To no, I have not heard this one before. Well, it's, you know, you know, it's just one of those kind of embarrassing stories. And so I, at first I'm thinking, you know, wow, my jokes really suck. Uh, but then, you know, Mike is laughing and, and then I start thinking, you know, he's a presenter and he's been in front of a room like me and maybe he's just trying to help me out. You know, he's like, well, I'll be the laugh track. You know, maybe if I laugh, people will get that that was a joke and you're supposed to laugh. Uh, and, and by the end, he's laughing so hard that I'm, I'm now thinking he's mocking me. You know, I'm getting I'm getting kind of pissed, to be honest. With you. I'm like, you know what? Seriously, man, I know I'm bombing it here, but you don't need to rub it in. Right. You know, like. Thanks. My. Thanks for nothing. You know, I, yeah, you're a big deal. I get it. You don't need to mock me like that, but that's fine. You know, so anyway, afterwards, I'm taking off my microphone and I'm kind of packing up my stuff. And and he comes up to the front of the room where I'm at and he says, you know, hey, man, I'm, I'm Mike Walter. And I said, yeah, I, I know who you are. Thanks for coming. You know, and before I could say anything, he's like, he's like, you are hilarious. He's like, you are so funny. And I said, really? I said, I thought you were like making fun of me. I didn't, I, you know, I was like, nobody was laughing but you. And he's like, well, it was all intellectual humor. And, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess nobody else was intellectual, you know, anyway. So, yeah, I, I, that was a really good uh, first meeting, I think, between the two of us. And I, I, I mean, gosh, I've thought about that. Like I said, it's been 20 years. And every time I tell a joke and it bombs, I think about him. So That's, that is very funny. <laughs> yeah, he's a good, he's a good guy. Like I said, you, you listed off, I think probably, uh, I think all of them would be among my favorite. People yeah. There's some sure. good, good folks that'll be involved with this year's, uh, or this, I should say this month's because we're going to do this the third Monday of every month. We'll be doing, uh, doing an event like this. Some will be a little larger like this one. Some will be a little smaller, um, but we'll be doing those throughout the rest of 2021. So now that I told that story, yeah. uh, I gotta I gotta let you down a little easy here. I think I don't think I'm gonna be available Monday uh, because, like you said, gigs are coming in, mm -hmm. and I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. Uh, you know, it's it's starting to get pretty hot and heavy, and I think other people are gonna start to see that too, particularly in the areas that are already opening up and those that aren't. It's like a like a spring under tension, and you best be ready to be busy because mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. It's gonna go uh, crazy. I think as as soon as. Be prepared. Get your stuff ordered early. Get ahead of time. You know, we're still facing container shortages. We're going to face, you know, this this backlog of demand. Uh, but anyway, so Monday night, I actually have a sound gig 
uh, I'll be be uh, running sound for Excellent. safely, of course, still. But I will see if maybe uh, maybe Cat could uh, jump in and uh, maybe even uh, Michelle, who I don't think you've ever met. No, so you, no, you, Michelle's you a member name. of our team. So my, you know, baptism by fire. Right? Nothing, so, nothing's better. We've done it before. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's be honest. Cat is definitely better than me. I get that. You know, I I, I can accept that. I, I'm look. I can accept Mike Walter laughing at my jokes, which I mean, I, I appreciate that he did. But I could accept that if if he wasn't, if they weren't funny, and he was just patronizing me. I can accept that too. But you know, uh, and I can accept the cat is better than me. See, and there's a lot of a lot of speakers out there that or people out there in the industry that would be kind of snarky and and laugh and be. <laughs> Mike is probably not. He's there's a few that would not, and he's he's one of them who wouldn't. He, no, I, like I said, I mean, after 20 years of knowing him, I, I think the world yeah, of him, I, yeah, you know, I, I, it was just, you know, I had no, we yeah, had no history, no reference. body of work, no context, you know, and it, and it went, it was funny because I, as I was presenting, I could feel myself going through this whole range of emotions. <laughs> anyway, no, I love Mike. I think he's a great guy. And I, I'm sure he doesn't watch this show, which is good because I think my story's safe, but. Uh, and another, another, before we get to the, start talking lighting and such, another thing with Mike is and it's odd or rare is that he's a speaker presenter trainer in the DJ industry. And yet 20 years ago, he was sitting in seminars and you know, last, last year he's sitting in seminars. This he's, he's someone that not only is there to, to present and give back, but he's also there to partake and um, absorb and, and such of what's being given to the industry. So um, not, some speakers do that. Most of them don't, unfortunately, because you well, get, I think that's what it takes to be in the front of the room. I think yeah. that if you want to be an expert, you you can never really rest on your laurels. And I think people would be surprised to find out how much I'm in class too. Uh, you, you know, uh, in fact, this was a lesson I learned. I guess it'd be twelve years ago when I released the first DVD, uh, the Event Lighting DVD, uh, through Alfred Publishing, is. Uh, some of the very first people who wanted a copy uh, wanted to buy a copy. They weren't asking for free copies, but some of the very first people said, yeah, put me down. I want to order one of those were some of the same people who could have made the DVD already. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why are these people who could literally do this DVD? Why are they wanting a copy? But why are people who I regard as experts asking for this educational material? And then I thought, that's probably why they're experts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never enough. I got to know more. I got to know more. And I got to know more. And that's why Mike is who Mike is. That's how he's become the, the, you know, uh, tremendous leader in our industry that he is. And, and I'd like to think that that's part of why I have something to offer as well is, uh, you know, it's always about growing a little bit more, learning just a little bit more, becoming just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think not, not only in this industry, but across the board is that, uh, where you always have to be learning. If you're not learning, you're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're dying. Well, and what I knew 20 years ago is irrelevant almost now. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, you look at the evol evolution of our industry, uh, you know, we were still very much using incandescent lighting back then. Uh, and I think we were still using CDs back then. Uh, I mean, nothing that, you know, very little of what we would recognize, you know, certainly the technology within powered speakers is very, very different today than it was then. The technology within speaker design as a whole, you know, the cones and some of the things we've talked about in shows, a lot has changed in the wireless world. We have, we've had two repacks in that period of time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to think like, you know, if I was still presenting the same stuff I was presenting 20 years ago, it would be pretty dated material, Yeah, you know, and, and I wouldn't be offering a lot of value to the industry. And I, and I hope that I'm continuing to offer value to the industry. Let's jump to lighting. <laughs> My jokes have not gotten any better though. I can just tell you uh, that right now. I, I, jokes. I, I actually went and watched one of our 2014 when we, when we first started watching one of our shows and beyond internet issues, there's little glitches and anomalies that are happening much more frequently than, than are today. But yeah, it was a rough start for us. You know, the difference is I just quit trying to be funny. I just gave up. Like, you know, <laughs> it. I don't I, like I said, now I don't care. It I just, just, it just comes naturally. Yeah. People, you know, people want to heckle me now. I'm like, yeah, good for you. Uh, nice. Got a lot of people with us tonight. Thank you guys for being with Ray and Mike and Jimmy and, and Howard and Robin and let's see, RT and Keaton. More of my favorite people. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of folks with us. Uh, Mikey Mike is uh, with us here. Hey, Mikey Mike. The there's two DJ Mikey Mikes. Uh, okay, Mike. Well, I guess Mike, it is the Mikey Mike. Either way. Yeah, there's there's two, and and then uh, this is this this is the other Mikey Mike that I haven't had a chance actually to meet uh, in any of the shows yet or anything. But uh, yeah, 
Mikey. So okay. yeah, thank you guys yeah. for being with us this evening. So, you know, I got to ask, can you, cause you can see who's watching is Rachel watching. I haven't seen Rachel on any of the chats yet. Ah, so thank goodness. Cause apparently during the ask anything show, she was watching and I totally bombed her pizza order. Oh, totally. Oh. But the good news is she's a pineapple pizza like me. So you know what? It's all good. Seriously. I'm rethinking a lot of my decisions with shows right now. <laughs> she messaged me and said, you bombed it completely. I'm like, <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she would too. Story of my life right there. There it is. Just story of my life. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to ask when I get a chance. That'll be one of the questions. So what kind of ice cream would you order for Ben's dough? And, and we'll watch you do that. Well, and I, I don't know if you've watched the show, but we learned that there's apparently in Iceland, there's apparently licorice ice cream. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought I had a universal love for ice cream, but thanks to Danny Max, I've learned that I don't. And I also learned that I'm not going to Iceland. So yeah, I, I actually, it was a day or two later, I saw someone who's had a cone of that. <laughs> and it just, just looked wrong. It was like a chocolate cone. It's like, ooh, chocolate cone. Mm, I mean, yeah. what's that stuff sticking out the top? It's like dark gray, ooky, icky. Ugh. Not a licorice um, fan. Black licorice, black licorice. In the words, immortal words of Randy Jackson, that's a no for me, dog. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> Okay, let's talk lighting. All right. We have some lighting picks for those of you who are looking to maybe kind of spruce up your light show. And as Ben said, we've got a little bit of time here before we really get into, at least in Minnesota, our prom season kicks in here at the end of April. Then we get into wedding season, like right on the tails of that. And for some of them I've talked to, they're not stopping till like deer hunting in Minnesota, which is at mid-November. It's like straight right, on through. Gonna go. It's going to be a business. So I need to get my notes back, actually, by the way, because I wrote down the uh, beam angles and some of the lights that I looked up. So I'll be right back. <laughs> there, the things went flying. It was a strong wind in here. It was. Uh, yeah, we've, we we have had some windy weather blowing up these nice 60 degree days the last, uh, last little bit. So, Oh, my gosh. I got to tell you, on the road, I actually uh, was able to eat outside and uh, not just because you can't eat inside. Again, uh, you know, this this place is fairly open, but it was so nice outside. I just wanted to. I thought, mm -hmm. what is this amazing feeling of sitting in the sunshine? And I actually had the window open in my home office here today. So it was pretty awesome. Yeah, which means it was like seven above. In <laughs> Would you believe it was like 50 something here? God. Yeah. How quickly things change. So I do have uh, five options, and they are not necessarily specific models uh, so much as representations of types of fixtures, mm -hmm. but in one case, it is kind of a specific model. Sure. <clears throat> um, and I think and usually you are going to do a top five, you count down. I'm going to sort of count up because uh, I love number one. Hmm. Um, but of course, when we say what's the right fixture, well, it depends. Bottoms up, friends. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look, shall we? So number one on my list, this has been an exceptional wash fixture, and it just got a little bit better. There was the wash effects, the wash effects two, and now the wash effects hex. Uh, it is a uh, very wide wash and, of course, has um, hex fixture, uh, so it means it has six in one diodes, so RGB, AW, and UV. Uh, and you can see that it's uh, got sort of this uh, kind of curved front to give you a little bit more spread. We've seen these used at trade shows and things like that. They work yes. great for uh, ceiling washes, and they also will cover a huge amount of dance floor. Uh, and uh, the uh, beam angle of this is about 41 degrees, so that's pretty wide. So, and, and there was a question on this the other day of somebody was asking, if they have the original one, is it worth upgrading to, to the, the current, the, the hex? I guess it would depend on if what you have now is doing the job. Uh, th there's certainly some advantages. I mean, it is an upgrade, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's brighter and it has more color mixing capabilities. You know, if we take traditional uh, RGB at zero to 255 values per channel uh, from memory, that's like 16.7 million possible color combinations. Whereas with the hex, it's something in the magnitude of the trillions. So, uh, and you need pretty much all of those trillion of options when you're doing weddings. Well, you certainly with an RGB, you're certainly going to struggle greatly uh, with things like pastels, mm -hmm. or champagne, or you know colors like that. We're having a white and an amber diode 
are going to give you substantial options. And having a UV just gives you, I mean, a whole new dimension of fun. Plus, you could use, a, use it as a blacklight fixture. So, uh, you know, you could just use it as a UV fixture, a little bit more versatility. So I, I couldn't say, you know, on an individual level, if it's worth it for you to upgrade, but I can tell you it's an upgrade. Did the price jump up when it went from the first to the second to the third? Was there a substantial price jump? You know, I don't remember. I just know how these things work. I don't know what they cost. Uh, I, I honestly don't remember. I know it's very affordable. Um, yeah, I'd have to look back at the other generations. I, I guess it's probably good news. The price wasn't really that meaningful where I didn't go, whoa, hey, that really jumped. You know, I just kind of went, oh, that's reasonable. You know? Yeah. So. Well, if you are interested, and in, you can go to the website, NLFX Pro. Dot com. And yeah, yeah, dot com. Yeah, I just, it's just, I start typing in and it goes. And this is the wash. FX hex. Or reach out to Katie at NLFX or Monday night, tune in and uh, hit up Cat and uh, say, hey, I need a deal. Uh, but you can always message us. You, know, you don't have to wait till Monday night. Okay, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, Jordan said, no, there wasn't much of a, uh, of a price increase going from step to step to step. So my point, my thought, and the reason I ask that question is for some of you who have that, um, there is the possibility of, of, you know, some starting DJs who may be interested in your old one. You can sell the old ones and buy the new ones and have the upgraded technology. Bingo. There you go. Yep. I mean, so, even if you get a fraction of what you paid for, it's less you're going to pay towards the new ones. So yeah, precisely. Win, win, win. And at the the amount of coverage those have, because I've seen those at trade shows, not the the Hex, but the others, if it's, yep. The same coverage as the other ones. They can, two lights can do a lot with those fixtures. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it's that's why it's number one on my list. Uh, you know, it's got. Now again, that's not to say that the others shouldn't be considered because it depends. Uh, right on cue. Thanks for taking a drink, John. I got you. So number two, yes. uh, I put in because. Come on, number two. There we go. It's a uh, it's a Fresnel type pic, type fixture. You can see that Fresnel lens in the front. And uh, those lenses are going to give us uh, some varying wash options. You can change those lenses, and I believe they just attach uh, magnetically, uh, just pop on, pop off. But uh, this is a RGBW. It's the EVE P160, uh, and Fresnels are basically designed with the purpose of wash. So I thought this one should be uh, definitely in there. Uh, and and by the way, depending on the lens you choose, this one will go up to 48 degrees. So a little bit oh. wider beam angle than the uh, hex, but of course it only has a quad LED in it. Uh, I can tell you, we also use these as house lights, pendants, that sort of thing uh, for various applications and they work extraordinarily well. And I can also tell you, if you take the lens off, it's even wider yet, so. Hmm, I've not yeah. seen that fixture before. Well, that's why we do these shows, isn't it? Yeah, and make sure we got to make sure Cat gets it on the website. Yeah, I sure hope it's there. Yeah, no, it's not. Ah, the Eve. Cat, uh, if you're watching, what are you doing? The the one thirty is uh, on the website, but not the one sixty. Okay, all right. Well, I will make a note of that. And yeah, uh, the one sixty has a little uh, an up updated lens <coughs> and, and a little more brightness. The way it's it's uh, yeah, the lens situation I think is different. Well, and Kat, who's our marketing director, will just say to Danny, who's in charge of the website, why isn't that on our site? And so this will just go there. downhill. I'll say Kat, and she'll say Danny, but it'll get on there. Yeah, so. It'll get there. Excellent. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm making a note right now. Yep, because I'm putting the uh, – this is a this particular one is a Chauvet DJ also. Yes, and I, uh, you know, I, I only went with a couple brands here, uh, and that's not for any particular reason other than, again, these are, these are somewhat representative of – uh, the types of products that are out there. So if you have a particular brand affinity or brand loyalty and you want to look for an, an alternative uh, from those brands, we can help you look there. But And I'm, I'm putting the links uh, for the for Wash FX Hex into the chat. And I just also put the, the link to the 130, which is very similar, but just a little bit smaller. Um, and it's only an RGB instead of an RGBW. So that will give you an idea of... Uh, of where it is, where it is and such, and then tomorrow Cat will get the other one all fixed. Yeah, and there's a variety of options within the Eve series too. So the, again, this is representative of types of fixtures. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see, moving on, number three. Um, and this here again, just as I said, representative of types of fixtures. Uh, this is a 
all-in-one type system. Uh, this one, you can see the stand is sold separately. There are others that come with the stand. This one you can see also has uh, some hanging brackets up here. So, uh, you know, it can be used to, uh, uh, to hang from an existing structure or truss or ceiling or something you've got. Or you could put it on a stand. And there are several members of the four bar family. Uh, there's also the gig bar, which has some effects, the gig bar move, which has some small moving heads on it. But they're all kind of part of that, that sort of pack and go type system where you pop up a stand and you've got four wash lights. Uh, however, something we should note, you know, and again, this does a really good job of washing it. But, you know, if you're looking for wide, smooth wash, uh, the optics on these are much tighter at, uh, I think, 14 degrees. Hmm. So big change. Which leads us to um, number four on my list. So now just to back on that, but just to, right back. Which leads to, me back to number three on my yeah, list. Yeah, I'm just had a question here because we did a show where we did, we talked about uh, filters and to be able to put filters in front of things. Now, a filter in front of that, you would be able to change that 14 degree with that, that in essence, a filter film to do a variety of different things. If a person wanted to go that route with them and have more of a wash. Absolutely. Excellent point. In fact, you could use one of the uh, asymmetrical filters like the 10 by 60, where you could say, well, I don't need any more vertical wash going on my ceiling or floor, uh, you know, because I'm in a standard ballroom, but I need more horizontal wash. Uh, that also works for uplights on a wall, by the way. Uh, yeah, you could absolutely, we, we sell those. They're the Roscoe OptiSculpt, and they're mm -hmm. also on our site. Uh, and there's a variety of options. Uh, there are some that are symmetrical, 20 by 20, 30 by 30, and then there's others that are asymmetrical, like 10 by 60, whatever. So uh, we can uh, we can definitely help you uh, determine which one's the right for your application. So excellent point, John. You should be uh, doing this show, not me. OptiScope, uh, the link for the OptiScope sheets, are it's in the chat there, so you can grab those. And take a look you at them. You are on the ball, my friend. You are just rocking. Yeah, you've got your, your it's. it's yes, I, medit I meditated over both the core par. Uh, uh, because of that, they have a very wide, smooth wash. So you can count on that from uh, cob fixtures, chip on board fixtures tend to have very, very wide, smooth washes. Uh, and so here is a par as opposed to the Fresnel we looked at earlier with that type of functionality. And again, this is the core par. ADJ has their dots pars uh, and there are other cob type fixtures out there. But if you're looking for a really wide, smooth radial wash, uh, a, a cob or chip on board is going to be uh, probably the uh, the ticket there. Questions on this before Excellent. I come nope. to my oh, grand I'm good. Route. I'm just finding and pasting and... Chop, chop, chop. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, we're good. We're good. It's following chats and such. Yeah, we had a little bit of a freeze there. It looked like... Uh on the video. So sorry about that. If you guys missed the uh, last fixture because of the freeze, um, actually I posted the core, core bar in there twice. Uh, the empty sculpt sheets, we were talking about those for the four bar flex or any light where it, you can actually use those filter sheets over the light and it will adjust the beam angles and you can do different things. And if you go to that link, you'll see that there, you can go and find all sorts of beam angle adjustment sheets that will tweak them and do different things with them. So if you need it wider and not as so tall, it can do it. If you need it to be just a big lit and spread it all out more, it can do it. If you want it to go and be really cool and just kind of black out the light, we'll just buy the gaff tape. That'll do that. Yes. If somebody wants uh, the color black, you can you can use our gaff tape gaff over tape. the lens and that'll work effectively well. Uh, so if, uh, and this was the light we were talking about with yep. the OptiSculpt, where if you wanted to apply more width to it and not more height, yeah, absolutely. So just, just drop us a line and we can help you find those uh, appropriate filters for what you want to do. Uh, so if this light and this light had a romantic getaway, oh goodness, this uh, is this is would lead this, to this light. This is where the show is, goes downhill when we start talking romantic getaways with lights. I'm just yeah, but we're not even we're not even rated by the MPAA. We don't even have to worry about like G R N C seventeen. I mean, you know, whatever. Besides, what would that get us? A PG thirteen rating, maybe, maybe. But there's time maybe. for you know, you know, Big Daddy's. You know, he just he just really likes it when we can keep the this show and PG or even G and, you know, cause he's, he's there is stickler. nothing G about big daddy. He's, I love big daddy, but there is nothing, not even PG. I don't know. How many, how many swear words are you allowed before yeah. they bump you up to R? <laughs> yeah. There was that presentation. Wasn't there? I saw it. I yeah, was there. We're I there. was sitting in the audience learning yeah, right so. next to you. Yeah. We were sitting there again. Another one of my all time favorite people, big daddy. I love me some big daddy, but there is nothing G or PG about him. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is probably why I love him so much. Uh, uh, he's hilarious. Uh, 
and he's a smart dude and he cares he cares a lot about our industry so so anyway uh like i was saying if uh if a uh Cobb fixture and a pack and go, you know, all in one type fixture had a love child, it would look something like this, which is the Dots T par from American DJ. And it is the uh, Dots pars, four of them on a ready to go system. And you can see a little foot switch controller down there and comes with the stand and all that good stuff. We're ready to go. And, and what a I, good way to wash a dance floor. And what I really Just like about way, those. Oh, sorry, what? Yeah, you know, one of the things I really like about this, because this is actually one that Michael uses when he's doing his little little things, is that the lens, there's a actually lens on these that can be taken off. So mm-hmm. you can have, I think that at least the one we have. Do yeah, these, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Fresnel style lens. I'm yeah. not sure, readily sure if it's removable or not, but it is a Fresnel style lens. Yeah, the ones we have so that I, have two little thumb screws and you can take <laughs> it off. I had omitted to say that the uh, this is a 70 degree beam angle. Uh, so again, you can see it's right up there, bigger than our Eve uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and whatnot. And again, those chip on boards have really wide uh, beam angles. So that's a 70 degree beam angle, and uh, this is 90. Yeah. So yeah, they do cover cover quite huge coverage, quite huge big bit. smooth wash for the, you know, if you want to kind of up your game a little bit, or maybe change your light show, make it a little easier, more portable, because this is going to be a year where you'll be doing. A lot of events, different locations, your flexibility, I think, is going to be key for a lot of us this year. So a nice little tree stand with some glow light can do a lot of lighting and be quick and easy to set up and break down when you're done with the night. Uh, Trevor has a question here for you, Ben. Do the cups tend to have less flicker? When he says flicker, are we talking about on film, on camera? I wonder if that's a... um, the only problem is okay. The Cobb are RGB instead of RGB AW, uh, but yeah. So Trevor, the flicker you're referring to is that talking camera, and then uh, and, and and we can't say with any on video. Yes, 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 on video. You no, know, not necessarily. Uh, we use chip on board fixtures all the time uh, in our productions. What it comes down to is what's called the PWM or pulse width modulation rate, uh, which basically when you dim an LED, it's just turning on and off really fast. And our brain can't see that. It just sees a dimmer light. But the camera is also not a moving image. It's just a rapid series of still pictures. So you have a frame rate there and you have a strobe rate with the fixture. And when those sync, then you can create that flicker or strobing effect in the video. And that is a product of the flash or the PWM pulse width modulation rate of the light and the frame rate of the camera. Hmm. So, so it's, it's, not, it's not something you could just say a chip on board fixture has that issue. Cause I can, I can promise you that's not the case at all. So a, a simple solution would be to go in, take that video into the computer and go in there frame by frame and just take out those frames that are how many frames per, per second is it? Well, it depends. Depends on your camera, but it depends on what you what you're shooting at. You know, uh, a simpler solution. I mean, you know, that's. I mean, that's, that's only uh, sixty frames per second. Come yeah. on. It so, depends on what you're shooting at. You know, but yeah, that uh, the other option. I mean, that's an option. That's an, that's an option. option. But there the you know. other option Slip would be to get a video friendly light. And in fact, many of the lights that we use, you can actually change the pulse width modulation rate in the light. So, you know, you can work with your video people to say, okay, what works for you? I can change my PWM rate, you know. Uh, in fact, we just did that for a magazine photo shoot where we were going back and forth uh, and they were doing some some uh, video shots, but they were going to take stills from it, whatever. Anyway, it was creating some things. So um, we, we said, okay, what are, you, uh, what are you shooting at? And let's try this. And it was great. So, so and then Trevor mentions that sometimes uh, that the whites they try to produce with RGB tend to be more bluish. So to get away from that problem where that could bother some videographers going to what well, we started out with a hex fixture as exactly. an example would be a better option. Exactly. Even an RGBA uh, and some of the pro fixtures, so, you know, like RGBAL, which is lime, uh, you know, you can get into really, really good whites. You can get into basically dial in your color temp. You know, what do you want? Do you want a 3750? Do you want a 3500? Do you want a, you know, a 5500? What color temp do you want? And you can, you can pretty much dial it up. Uh, but yeah, RGB, uh, you know, is going to be the least um, capable of those. So like you said, John, going with a hex fixture where you have a white and an amber, uh, that's going to give you the ability to do some things there as well. Or they could go to the store and buy flashlights. And whenever they want, they could shine a flashlight on the floor. That would be pretty awesome too, I bet, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, but why would they hire you then? Oh, because I know how to hold flashlights. 
That's a valuable skill. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I feel validated now. Yeah, we, that's a valuable skill. So uh, everything you saw tonight, the links, uh, we put those in the chat. The 160 will be, uh, we'll get Kat on that to get that up for tomorrow. And then, of course, next Monday night, we'll make sure that Kat's got those available. And she'll have some great pricing for you guys. And a lot of other gear from NLFX Pro. I think we've covered everything. We talked so. about we and again, you don't have to wait till Monday night. You can reach out to Katie, who's in sales. You can contact her via the live chat on our site, or you can send a message, or you can email her, Katie at NL, that's K A T I E at NLFXPro.com, or call us up, uh, however it works for you. Got another question that just popped up. Um, last year, uh, last year, the hot gear was podcasting gear. What's been hot so far this year? Uh, I would say everything else <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, people have, uh, you know, have sort of set aside everything else that they might have needed or wanted. Uh, and everybody was pivoting to podcasting and video streaming. And now as those live events are coming, you know, they're coming back, it's, it's, it's pretty much everything else. So now people are coming in, they're picking it, getting their sound equipment and updating um, and lighting. Yep, yep. Everything getting ready for the season. And video gear is not, uh, it's certainly cooled off from the white hot, you know, that it was, uh, but, but video gear remains in demand because I think we've seen uh, not just uh, out of necessity, but out of possibility, you know, that we can uh, add a live streaming component to the, the hybrid type events that we're going to be doing now where you have an in-person event, but you now also have the live stream uh, as an option for the people who can't come. Yeah. for a variety of reasons. So I, I, yeah, we're, we're still seeing strong demand for video. Uh, but like I said, what we're seeing the biggest surge in is, in, in fact, we're seeing quotes that, you know, we would have probably regarded as dead, you know, a year old people are saying, ah, I'm ready to move on this now. I need mm -hmm. to, I need to go on this now, you know, and bear in mind, friends, I, I just got to tell you, there's a huge shortage of containers, uh, you know, as this demand kicks up and supplies are strained, you might find yourself waiting. So don't uh, try to get in front of that thing, you know, uh, get your orders in, of course, with us. Right. But uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't wait till the week before you need it. That, that could lead to um, uh, some heartache for you. I've heard from a lot of people when they've been getting ready for the season, as we were looking ahead to that. And there's in the, the DJ chat rooms there that people were like, you know, and that $1,400 check, they're, they're calling it the Ben Stowe check. <laughs> So it's, like, fantastic. so it's like, well, that's great for Ben, but it, I, I was thinking the same thing with uh, availability is that if everybody in essence is all of a sudden doing that, then that means that the first ones there win, the ones there will eventually win, but may not be in time for your event. So you're thinking yeah, about we're it. Trying to, uh, we're trying to get ourselves stocked up as well as we can. So we're trying to, you know, kind of pack the warehouse a little bit to help you out, but you know, when the manufacturers don't have it and we run out, uh, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you what, you, you kind of want to be early because uh, obviously we don't we don't take advantage of these situations. We still give you great pricing all the time. Uh, when others figure out they're holding on to the last piece, you can bet they're going to want what they want for it, you know. And it is also that part of it getting used to new gear because it's not something you can just take out. Oh, UPS is here. Great. Let's go. We're going to do a show tonight. No, yeah, it's not such a good idea. No, never a good plan, but it happens a lot. And, you know, we're, we try to support people through that, but no, it's never a good plan. Yeah. Robin, thank you for putting the, uh, she put the link in for next Monday night's show. Uh, coming up here at the top of the hour in about 20 minutes, uh, Jay and Brian are going to be in the chill room tonight, uh, kind of holding court. You guys can jump in there. They're going to be recording about a 20 minute, half hour session or for Jay, if Jay's there, it'll be 50 minutes to two hours somewhere. 20 minutes to two hours, somewhere in that gap. It's somewhere, in that. somewhere in that gap. So you guys can join them tonight and have some fun with that. And we'll be back again uh, next Monday night with our big show. And you'll get more information in the uh, emails that come out this weekend. Ben, thanks for putting the list together. And thank you guys for being with us tonight. Bye, everybody. Uh -huh.